Leah with Leah Noel Design Co. And today we are gonna paint my refrigerator, my shop refrigerator. And I'm really excited about it because it's just boring, white, and ugly. And we're gonna make it pretty amazing. So the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna clean this whole thing with white lightning cleaner. So white lightning cleaner is a product from Dixie Bell and it is a degreaser. We wanna get all the grease, all the oils, all the dirt, all the sawdust off of this piece. What I do is I mix it in a water bottle with hot water. Um, I mix about a tablespoon with hot water and I just put it in this water bottle and I shake it up really good and I just keep it out here for whenever I'm doing projects. I also have a bucket of hot water that I'm gonna use just to kind of rinse my rag, but um, I'm gonna go ahead and clean the whole piece with white lightning cleaner then I'm gonna rinse it with clear water, just plain old water, and then we're gonna put the primer on it. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that now. Okay, so the whole refrigerator is washed uh, and dried, and it took me about 13 minutes to do so. So now I'm gonna go ahead and tape off the rubber areas with just masking, or not masking tape, but painter's tape. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that now. Okay, so my edges are taped off-ish. I'm gonna to have to really use my artist brush. The refrigerator's still a little wet in the, um, in the like rubber creases and I don't know how well the tape's gonna stick, but I have a pretty steady hand, so I'm just gonna use my artist brush. I am gonna go and prime the entire piece with this. This is called Slick Stick from Dixie Bell. This is specifically made for metal, glass, plastic, laminate, countertops, those kinds of surfaces that um, paint has a harder time adhering to. So I use this on my kitchen countertops last October, it has been a full year, um, and I used this product along with the Gator Hide that we're gonna seal this piece with, and I've had no problems with the paint coming up. So we're gonna go ahead and use this, and uh, we're gonna just go ahead and just prime. I'm gonna use my artist brush, and I'm also gonna use this, uh, this foam roller. I picked these up at Home Depot or Menards, I will link them below but they just are really good for flat surfaces. We're just gonna get one coat of this on and then we're gonna be ready to paint, guys. I'm gonna get my flat surfaces first so I can open the door and leave it open when I do all the details around the doors. Okay, so I saved the top for last because the top seems to be the dirtiest and the hardest to reach, so I don't wanna get that gunk on my roller um, before I'm done painting all of this. I am painting my hardware with the primer. I will, I did take the handles off. I will clean and spray paint those, the, um, you know, like the refrigerator handles. I will clean and spray paint those and the um, this hardware here, I will put decor wax on it. I will show you all of that when we get to it. So I'm gonna go ahead and put some slick stick primer on it and that's gonna help the decor wax stick. But I'm not taking this refrigerator apart because I don't have space for it um, and I don't think it would be the most efficient way to paint it. Hey guys, looks to me like we got all the parts of this refrigerator. It's really easy cleaning. Um, I know this video is fast forwarded, so cleaning it and putting the slick stick on took me about 30 minutes. So I hope that's helpful to you. It's kind of easy because it's just a big rectangle, but I will be back tomorrow when it is dry and we will paint this thing a beautiful color. Nice. So we are back. I have put two coats of slick stick on this refrigerator. Um, it totally took two coats because it has a little bit of a texture to it. So the two coats were really important. If it didn't have a texture, like I've done a metal desk before, I only used one coat because you really just need something 
um, to get your paint to adhere to the metal. But we are using chalk paint, so it's going to um, adhere well anyway. So we are gonna use this color, it's called the Golf from Dixie Belle. If you're doing a refrigerator this size, I would recommend you get a 16 ounce container. That should be plenty to use. We're gonna apply it the same way we did the slick stick. We're gonna use um, a roller and we're gonna use an artist brush. Um, and I have my paint in a FIFO bottle. This is called First In, First Out. Um, they're popular in the food industry, but I store my paint in them. So that's what I'm gonna be using. I'm gonna go ahead and just paint this and give it probably two coats. Um, and then we'll be ready for step three. I'm just gonna mist my sprayer. And we're just gonna go right in. Okay, so if you noticed, I haven't opened the doors. I'm going to go around this refrigerator and get all my flat surfaces first, and then I'm gonna do um, all of the edges and the little fine details. There's not many fine details on this refrigerator, so it's quite easy. Okay, so I have all of my flat surfaces. It took me 15 minutes to do that. Now I'm gonna go ahead and get all of my interior surfaces, just these flat areas, and then I'll get my artist brush out and do all the little details. I am painting my hinges, and I um, am doing the, or I'm, I did prime my hinges, and I won't worry about getting chalk paint on them because I'm gonna use a decor wax on them to just freshen them up. On the little rubber part that I got paint on, I'm just gonna go ahead and use a baby wipe and wipe it off right away. All right, so it took me 25 minutes to paint the whole thing. Super easy. Um, I'm gonna let it dry and I'm gonna give it a second coat and then we're gonna go in with our transfer. Hello, we are back. So I've given this refrigerator two coats of the Golf with my roller. I've let them dry and I've been playing around and positioning some transfers on my piece. Um, if you guys have never heard of transfers before, they are these are from Redesign with Prima and they are on the Dixie Bell website. This is called Beautifully Native, uh, and it's this deer shed antlered piece with some arrows. And then this one right here is called Wondrous Floral, and I love this one. I'm using this one on the top and the bottom, and then I'm using this deer head here with some arrows, and then I have one on each side. I'm not really accenting my sides too much because they don't really get seen in the garage, but I thought this would be a good transfer to put on because um, this is my workshop. It's the garage, so it felt a little bit like the the deer skulls would kind of be cool in the garage. So that's why I'm using it. And then of course, I just love the floral transfer. So we're gonna go ahead and adhere it. I'm gonna start here with this because this is the only thing that really matters that if it's centered, I do have it over a little bit because I do have a handle right here. So I'm gonna just center this with my, with my eyeballs. I may actually pull out a tape measure and measure just to make sure I'm kind of in the center. And then above it, I'll put my arrows and then I'll put my uh, Wondrous Floral. This is just half the transfer sheet right here. And then I have the other half here. It does have this, um, I actually have been working with two of them. It does have this middle section here that usually you know, if you wanted to use the whole transfer, it has this middle section, but I'm not gonna use that. I'm just gonna save that for another project or, you know, something of that nature. And I'm gonna go forth and just adhere these on. So you guys can watch me do it. I'm gonna use the wood stick that is in it, and I'm just gonna apply pressure, and uh, we're gonna see if it sticks to this refrigerator, this textured refrigerator feel. Sometimes the transfers are a little bit harder to get on a textured, um, piece such as like the refrigerator texture, but they do go on. They just take a little more elbow grease than if you had a really super smooth surface. So we're gonna go ahead and do that. 
Okay, so with the transfer, I pulled the sheet off. This stuff is like a temporary tattoo. So once I start rubbing it on, it will adhere to the piece. So I'm just gonna gently lay it on here. And I'm just gonna make sure I'm center and then I'll start rubbing. I'm gonna use my nose for reference. So that is actually dead center right there. I just wanna make sure that my antlers are gonna match up and not be overextending. Okay, so now I'm just gonna go ahead and start slowly peeling this back, and we're gonna see if it adheres. If there's spots where it hasn't adhered, I will go and I'll just push on it until it does adhere. So we're just gonna go ahead and do that. Okay, so it adhered beautifully. You can see I have a little bit of residue on my paper, and that's normal. I'm not gonna worry about that. Uh, in fact, it's just the clear lining. So now I'm just gonna go ahead and use my hand and I'm just gonna make sure it's really secure on here. Okay, so the second step here, well, I mean, I don't know if it's a step, but now I'm gonna attach the antlers and I'm just gonna line them up with the size of the transfer. straight <laughs> to me it looks straight so we're good so I'm gonna go ahead and I'm just gonna um, apply the rest of the transfers the same way okay guys I'm gonna continue adding these transfers and I will be back when we're ready to seal hey guys so all my transfers are on and they look really good and they're adhered well. One of the things I like to do to make them look more authentically painted, is I like to sand them a little bit. Now you do not have to do this. In fact, if you like this vibrant look, go ahead and keep it like this. But two of the things I use, um, they're both, you can get them on the Dixie Bell site. This is a sanding pad, sanding sponge, and this is a finishing pad. Um, if I just want like a light sanding over it, a lot of times I'll just use this. And this kind of takes off any of the excess, like um, clear sticker type material that is on the transfer. What I'm gonna do here, cause I want this to be a little bit worn and a little bit more like into the paint is I'm gonna sand over it lightly with the sanding sponge. Now this is a new one. I just used it on the side to try it out uh, and I liked the way it looked. So it's kind of like a, it's a fine grit. So it's like a 220 grit. So I'm just gonna go ahead and go over this with the sanding sponge and you're gonna see that it creates more of an authentic look. So it's kind of bright. We wanna just distress it a little bit. I am using quite a bit of pressure, and so you can see some of the transfers coming off. So you can't really see it on camera um, as well as you can up close. You can kind of see, just like through here, how the teal's coming through just a bit. Bring you in. But um, it really makes the piece feel more authentic when you're up close to it. So I'm gonna go ahead and finish that and then we're gonna do a little shading. Hey guys. Hey. So I am adding a step. Now, if you're new to chalk paint or if you're just wanting to paint your refrigerator and do something simple, you can skip this step, absolutely. But I felt like my piece needed a little bit of shading. So I'm gonna use wax. Now, the rule with wax is usually you have to top coat your piece and then you apply your wax. Well, with Dixie Bell waxes, they're water-based, so they bond with Dixie Bell sealers. So I'm gonna go ahead and use my wax on my um, chalk paint 
okay, just directly on my chalk paint, and then I'll use a Dixie Bell sealer over it, and I can do that because it's water-based. Now, if you buy a different kind of wax, you're not gonna wanna do that. This is this is a rule that is like exclusive to Dixie Bell. If you buy a wax at um, like a dark wax from another company, usually they are oil-based and they don't work well with water-based sealers. So um, this is just a little extra thing I'm gonna do. So I'm just gonna show you guys how since we're here. So I have a wax brush. You could use a chip brush. You could use uh, a towel to do this. Um, but I prefer to use my wax brush because it's flat and it's easy to use. I just dip it in a little bit of my wax and this is Best Dang Wax in black, okay? And I'm just gonna start putting some on my corner like this and this is just gonna shade. You could also do this with paint. Um, I just prefer to do it with wax because it just glides better. So this is just gonna kind of like age the piece, age it a little bit um, and just shade the corners and just kind of give it a cool effect. So I'm just gonna do a little bit on my corner here. And I'm just gonna take, this is a softer, this is a soft cloth, like a bath cloth. And I'm just gonna buff it in to my paint. And I'm really just gonna do this in the corners of my piece. And then I'm gonna seal right over it after it's cured. Um, I feel like it's already starting to dry really well. So I'll probably only wait about a day to seal it. I have waited up to two weeks for my wax to dry, um, just depending on my humidity and like the kind of piece and the paint that it's over. That is the most important thing when you're using the Dixie Bell waxes and you're applying a sealer over them is waiting until they're completely dry before you try to apply sealer over them. We're gonna go up a little higher here. Okay, so I don't like the way this looks. I'm gonna use a little clear wax to erase it. So this is clear wax, um, and I'm just gonna use a little bit of it to kind of help erase and blend some of this back. Wax pulls up wax. So um, when I don't like the way something looks with like the darker wax, I can pull it back up with the clear wax. And really, I just want to buff this wax in. So I don't have to wait as long for it to dry and so it just looks like an authentic shade. So I'm just going to give it a lot of elbow grease. Okay, so now I'm gonna use my elbow grease and some clear wax to just kind of buff this out and make it look a little more natural. You can already see the difference from this side to this side. So it's just a little clear wax like this, just a little bit. And then I just kind of go over the edge of the corner and work my way up. And that's just kind of taking some of it off I'm leaving a lot of it in that little bit of refrigerator texture we got going on. Hey guys, so this is not a fun part of the tutorial. Um, so I decided that this transfer up here, after taking pictures and looking at it, it is just too much. So this is, um, Dixie Bell paints all water-based, so I can totally just paint right over it. So I'm just going to sand this back a little bit harder than I did the first time, and I'm just going to paint over it. Um, it's an expensive mistake because I did use half of my transfer, my, uh, transfer on here and I don't like it. So it's, it's no big deal. I'm going to paint over it. Um, it kind of hurts a little, but I'm going to like it better in the long run and that's what matters. So I'm just going to show you how I'm just going to rough it up. I'm just going to paint right over it. And I'm just gonna use the extra paint that I have on my um, roller because I, oh, you know what? This is getting, sometimes these rollers get, as they sit in the bags, they get uh, globby. So I may have to get a new one, but we'll see. So I'm just gonna paint right over it. 
I'm still gonna shade my corners, so I'm not worried about, I'm just gonna cover up this transfer. And I'm just gonna put some arrows on here instead. Um, just to keep it a little bit more simple. Okay, I'm gonna let hey that guys, dry. We're back. So our piece is painted, the wax is dried and cured. Um, it's only t It only took uh, about a day. So my assumption being that the wax dried so quickly is because I really buffed it into um, the paint. Like there's not much here. So as you can see, my transfers are on. I did a couple transfers on the sides too. Um, I just applied them all the same way. And we're gonna go ahead and we're going to apply the Gator Hide. So when I apply Gator Hide, I like to just wear a glove and I have my blue Gator Hide sponge and I like to mist it with water like this. I get both sides too, because, okay. And I mean, I should not have any water dripping out, just a little bit to just get it wet. Let me show you what the product looks like. This is Gator Hide, okay? Gator Hide is heat and water resistant. Wait, re repellent. Repellent is stronger than resistant. Let me give you an example how, of how durable Gator Hide is. I painted, I have a small home and I have a little kitchen island, just a small kitchen island. And that is where everything happens from my teenage son who's 14 to my nine year old daughter. They drop everything there. We check homework on there. We cook on there, just a little area. I put Gator Hide on this countertop. I used about, um, I wanna say I used four or five coats actually. Um, we're only gonna use two to three on this one. Um, but that countertop has been perfect for a year. This month it's been a year and I haven't had too many issues with it. So that is how durable Gator Hide is. It can hold up to the wear and tear of a countertop. So that's why we're gonna use it on the refrigerator here. That's also probably, you know, it's gonna be like exposed to bikes, maybe falling on top of it because it is in my garage or getting bumped with furniture. So this is the sealer I'm choosing to use on this refrigerator. So. Let me get started. I did already put it in a bowl. And I'm gonna grab that bowl and I'm gonna just show you how I do it. Okay, so we're using our Gator Hide. I have it in my bowl. And I'm just gonna dip my sponge in and I'm gonna do it in the same fashion I did while I was painting. I'm going to do my flat surfaces first and then open the doors up and do the inside. I'm also gonna let it uh, dry about an hour to three in between. Um, I'm just gonna, I'm just going to um, make sure it's totally dry. It doesn't feel tacky or cool to the touch. If it feels cool to the touch, it's not dry yet. And then I'm gonna go over it as many times as I feel necessary, which is probably gonna be two to three coats. Okay, so you guys, we are done. I'm gonna let this dry and I'm gonna come back and I'm probably gonna give it two more coats the same way I did. Um, one to two more coats. And I wanna talk about how much product you will actually use when doing a refrigerator. So if you wanna paint your refrigerator, I do wanna let you know that um, my links below are affiliate links and when you order from them, I do earn a commission. You don't pay anymore but I do earn a commission from the links that are posted below. So um, when you're ordering, um, I do love this product. It's all I use, I use Dixie Bell. And when you're ordering, there is no reason to order anything bigger than a 16 ounce jar to do a whole refrigerator. Uh, Slick Stick, it's the first product we use as a primer. A 16 ounce jar will be plenty. You'll have some left over, I'm sure. For the paint, um, I used every bit of a 16 ounce jar. Uh, so a 16 ounce jar will cover a whole refrigerator, but I did use every bit of it for two coats of paint. The clear, uh, the clear coat or the Gator Hide, you're gonna wanna order a 16 ounce jar as well. 
and that will cover your whole piece. If you do want to do the step where you use the wax, there's an option. Uh, you can get the um, 10 ounce wax or the a four ounce wax. I would recommend that you get the four ounce wax, the smaller one. And the reason is because it just lasts forever. Like I maybe go through one of these a year. So, um, so yeah, so that is, and I paint every day. So that is how you paint your refrigerator. If you enjoyed this video, please like and subscribe to my channel. Uh, and let me know in the comments of any other videos of, you know, unique things that you want to see painted, uh, whether it be furniture or whether it be in your home or you have a really cool idea, please send it my way. Thank you guys for watching and I'll see you soon.